is Jessica Matthews. I'm the co-founder uh, and CEO of Uncharted Play, and we are a kinetic energy company. Our mission is pretty simple, to power the Internet of Things sustainably. But that's not where we started. Uh, we've been in business for over four years, and we actually started out as an impact social enterprise that developed energy-generating play products and sports products for the developing world, particularly communities where uh, people, like the two billion people around the world who uh, live without reliable access to electricity, uh, where they wonder how they will continue on with their days when the sun goes down. Um, places where you have to use uh, different things like diesel generators and kerosene lamps, burning fossil fuels to get light and basic needs, uh, and of course, threatening the environment and your own personal well-being. And so, essentially, the idea behind Uncharted Play when we first started was to create a product that would both provide power and empower these individuals. Um, when you think about technology, it's not just the pure, tangible function. It's also the intangible experience. How do you as an individual feel better um, and in, almost really feel happier you know, as you use the product because that's going to make you want to continue to use it and really make it a meaningful part of your life. And so we looked at these communities and noticed that while they are facing these very dire energy issues... There's also this beautiful experience, this very human, um, positive experience around soccer and play. And particularly in soccer, the most popular sport around the world, this is something that we noticed where all of the kind of hopelessness and sadness and um, disenchantment would kind of fade away. And that people would be really passionate and excited and energized on the pitch when they were playing soccer, regardless of whether or not they had a real soccer ball or uh, whether or not they even had shoes on, their excitement was there. And so as a trained psychologist, um, or rather someone who studied psychology economics, uh, kind of tinkered my way into mechanical engineering, I thought, well, doesn't it make sense to kind of combine those two? What are the synergistic effects from taking something that people already love and people that, things that people already do uh, without being axed and really looking at how we can amplify existing behavior to create a positive change? And so in terms of just creating something that made sense, to me anyway, that's where we first came up with the socket, our first product. The socket is a soccer ball that harnesses the kinetic energy that's generated during play stores it inside of the product so you can use it to provide clean, renewable power off-grid. You guys can check it out here. It's only in... Oh, thank you. It's only uh, about an ounce heavier than a normal soccer ball, which is really hard because uh, it started out much heavier during the prototyping stages. Um, and it's, it ended up being something much bigger than we ever thought. Um, we got presidents to play with it. Uh, we've actually distributed over 50,000 units of this current ball over the last 12 months to places all around the world, bringing power and light and play and happiness uh, to over a quarter million people. And at the same time, we started to develop more products and really figure out our expertise. Um, because I'm mic'd up, I won't jump. But for those of you who are lucky enough to be here earlier, you saw me jump rope in heels, and I will do it later, if anyone doesn't believe I can, because I can. Uh, uh, but even jump ropes, fun jump ropes, I can, I, the, all the tricks and things you can do, making sure that the product's still functional and still has the original uh, purpose, but then just from the turning of this rope can generate enough power to power a lamp or two lamps. Yeah, you got two handles, why not? <laughs> um, and so looking at what we had done, what he had built, I started to really think about where else in the world, what could we do? You know, what was possible? Uh, we were fortunate enough to create products that were really meaningful, that are efficient, um, and really take the time to develop something, though, that was probably 
going to be useful for more than just the developing world. So we started to experience some, something that I like to call the shrinking game, where we started out with these huge mechanisms, three pound soccer balls, and started to work and work and work over the next four years to shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down, think about different form factors, make sure the ball is bouncy and light and playful, um, until we got to the point where we could get it really small. Um, we could get it even more efficient. We could uh, really think about the nuances of the functionality of the product and not just make it an energy harvesting system, but really a soccer ball that happens to harness energy, a jump rope that happens to harness energy, uh, a longboard that happens to harness energy, a, a wheelchair that happens to harness energy. And so in summary, I kind of came to, I had a come to Jesus moment where I realized we're really good at two things. Uh, we're really good at putting energy harvesting systems into small, weird places uh, without disrupting the functionality. And we're really good at introducing technology in a manner that's both meaningful and palatable to, palatable to the masses. And what I mean by that is, you know, there are many people who wouldn't necessarily understand kinetic energy until we give them a socket. Because they understand soccer, because they love soccer, because this is something that's going to matter to them much more than just cranking something. Uh, we really understand how to connect those two things. So as I started to look more broadly into where we could expand to, I started to look at the energy problems facing the IoT. The, one of the main things that's holding back the IoT is battery life. So funny enough, the energy problems that we've been working to combat and deal with abroad started to come home. Quite frankly, no one wants to be tethered to a wall. And so how can we really expect the IoT to be accepted in any kind of wide-scale way if what we're going to have to do each day is charge our Internet of Things product. We actually ran a, a poll in New York City um, asking people, like, you know, what do you think is holding back the Internet of Things? And, of course, we actually had to explain to them what the Internet of Things is. Um, and they cited battery life. You know, oh, well, it sounds like the Apple Watch is going to be difficult for this reason. And um, I liked my Fitbit until I forgot to wear it one day because I had to charge it, and then it just ruined everything, and I stopped using it. Um, and so we said, well... Quite frankly, you shouldn't have to think about charging. We will be doing our jobs right if the way people think about their Internet of Things products is the way they think about their current beloved products, and they're not worried about whether or not it's charged or not charged. And just a general motion, the most minute vibrations, are keeping that battery going so you can actually live a more connected life. And so we decided, you know what? Let's pull this, all this together and jump all the way in. Our technology, specifically where we think that we have our expertise, is in something called MORE. It is our proprietary technology, motion-based, off-grid, renewable energy, um, and is essentially a customizable, self-sustaining system that will power, hopefully, the IoT. Anything that's moving, we hope, will be powered by MORE. Um, we have seven patents and patents pending that we've been developing around this related to four specific harvesting methods. And it's actually really exciting. I, we've been working on things like, I mean, smart shopping carts have been really fun to look at how do you make sure that they're both meaningful in terms of what data people are getting from it, as well as useful and easy to use uh, regarding how it's powered, uh, to basketballs, to uh, wearables. Um, we're really looking at how small things can get, and we have a really exciting opportunity to take the expertise we've been building in developing these systems for the developing world and scaling them down and bringing them to the United States and to the developed uh, markets and saying you should be willing and wanting of more from your products. Um, and I think this is really fitting for the IoT across the board because the whole idea is that we want to get more data, that we want to know more, that we want to be connected, that we want to be um, more, better educated. So why not ask for more in terms of how we power it? Uh, why not be willing to get more in general? So uh, please be watching the space. We're going to be releasing some of our projects uh, in the next few months with different partners that we're working with. And if you have an IoT product and are thinking about how it will be powered, let's chat. Thank you. <laughs>